right, guys, we are here today with the power within us. Uh, we are about to talk to Marin about Kundalini Yoga and a bit about her journey. So, yes. Hi, Marin. Hi, How are you? Sabrina. I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming here today. We're delighted to have you as our first guest. You're very welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just really wanted to know, you know, a bit about uh, yourself and what you do and um, about Kundalini. Know. Yeah, um, and I haven't really had a big, um, so many years of experience of yoga before that, you know, some yoga teachers have done yoga for 10, 15 years, so for me it was quite a fast track really. Uh, so in 2009 I went to India and um, I did a little bit of yoga, Hatha yoga at the Sivananda Ashram, uh, but only yeah, a few days, and then I kept up with the practice while I was traveling, but once I came back to London it kind of fizzled out a little bit. Um, and then I, through a friend, I found a Kundalini Yoga class, and that was more or less inspired by my mother, who is a, a spiritual healer, and mm -hmm. she works with Kundalini energy, so I had kept talking to my friend about it, without really ever getting involved with what kind of healing my mom was doing. And then my friend said, oh, there's something like Kundalini Yoga, you want to come along? So we went. <laughs> and um, it was absolutely amazing. I remember we cycled there, and on the way back, we cycled down the hill and chanting, Why Guru? You know, <laughs> completely on a complete wow. high, and had this really beautiful experience. Um, so I kept going to class maybe once, twice a week for the first two months, and then it completely took me. And um, I think maybe one month later, I was doing the teacher training. <laughs> so, and that's the amazing thing about Kundalini Yoga. So, first of all, everybody is. Um, they really want to create teachers rather than gather disciples. So that was Yogi Bhajan's um, mission, to create teachers. So he, he brought this type of yoga to the West in the 60s um, because we are in the Aquarian age and he thought, okay, for this age we need something very fast, very effective. So all, he was also a master in Hatha Yoga, but so he thought, okay, these people, they're seeking. He, when he came, he, he went to California, he saw everyone using drugs and sex and rock and roll, and he said, okay, they, they want to expand their consciousness, but this is not healthy, so I'm gonna teach them Kundalini Yoga. And he actually taught at Woodstock um, oh, <laughs> Kundalini wow. Yoga. Yeah, so and this is really, really the amazing uh, thing about this. So it's very, everyone can come to every class, um, everyone is, Quite quickly, if they are uh, really getting it, uh, they will be recommended to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And that is more for their uh, transformation rather than everybody is expected to teach. Uh, so it's really about um, discovering what is your truth. So some people then start teaching, some people don't, but it's a very great uh, tool for them to, mm -hmm. to evolve, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so it was the same for me. The teacher training is, is an amazing journey. Um, and I started teaching quite quickly halfway through the course and that was uh, such a blessing um, because I see how people respond and how I really can uh, inspire them and touch them, help them, give them tools to live a healthy, happy life. So um, my background is as a social worker, so oh. my, I, always, I w always wanted to help people but it was kind of, as a social worker, that wasn't the right uh, way so I it was a lot of pressure I, I was I felt very frustrated I couldn't spend enough time with with my clients uh, and I then gave too much and then burned out more or less you know and then now through Kundalini Yoga I feel I can really give uh, something to people who need it by by sharing the teachings um, so just briefly so that you know what <laughs> Kundalini Yoga is so it's it's also called the yoga of awareness it's about it's a very holistic uh, practice it's about healing uh, bringing mind, body, spirit in, in balance um, and as I said before connecting with your soul and what is your soul's pur soul purpose uh, people who uh, practice regularly Kundalini Yoga quite quickly they will look at everything they do in life they might change relationship, jobs they change mm -hmm. their eating habits you know they suddenly they start something creative because it's much they're much more in touch with their higher self so um, yeah and so it's really in a nutshell. Sounds, <laughs> sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, really great. So, so yes. Um, so you started in uh, 2011. Eleven. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And was it challenging at all for you, or the, it was the teacher training, or the whole the whole journey? the whole journey? Um, 
So yeah, it's it's quite a roller coaster, and um, because you're looking at a lot of aspects in you, so a lot of dark stuff as well. It's not just mm. the oh, you know, I'm yeah. holy. No, it's everything that all that garbage you have accumulated over years. Oh, yes. You you know you you are faced with. Um, so halfway through the course, I was kind of I didn't give it up, but I was like, oh, this is all, you know, <laughs> resisting, you know, yeah. and rebelling, and this is silly, you know, and and that's what what. It does this training. It brings you to who you you know. It's like strips of all the pretense and brings you to your truth, to the core. And the the ego might be rebelling because it's mm -hmm. like, hang on a minute, I've done this now my whole life, and we are we are fine. We don't need to change. So the <laughs> ego doesn't want to change, you know. So and by changing yourself, obviously everybody around you know some friendships suddenly you think. I don't know why you know why I still hang out with that person because it's kind of nothing you know it, it doesn't help me grow and maybe it's holding me back even you know uh, there was a whole issue about not drinking anymore so that was difficult because people were like oh you know from one extreme to the other come have one at least so yeah. people didn't want to accept it because it, it made them look at themselves as well and, and mm. their behavior and they kind of felt a bit patronized or I don't know so yeah, it was many challenges in my relationship with my husband, now husband, you know, he saw this massive change uh, so quickly and he kind of tried to keep up, but then he couldn't, you know, because mm -hmm. he wasn't doing the yoga so much and so he was kind of feeling like he's losing me uh, mm -hmm. to, to the yoga. Uh, and he, because I changed and I wasn't the person anymore he fell in love with so it was quite a difficult uh, that was quite difficult now we are kind of we got it back together and we've, we've mm -hmm. found a, a, something common we can can share and oh, wow. appreciate each other but yeah I mean it was was definitely difficult and it, it constantly teaching is, is great and but it constantly challenges you again okay. and you're processing all that stuff and the students you attract they that they teach you so you attract a certain type of student also mm -hmm. because of your personality and yeah you're constantly having to look at yourself again you know there's no being off the hook <laughs> ever you oh, know wow. so yeah it's not not always um an easy right it's not for the faint-hearted you have to have determination and courage and be brave and, mm -hmm. and, and some grit and but uh it's worth it <laughs> okay yeah that sounds great sounds a really really interesting journey um I wanted to ask you something. So, do you believe in God, and uh, what what does God means to you? you yeah, you know. Yeah, I believe in God, and God for me means you <laughs> and me and everything around us. So, God, God is in. We are sparks of the divine, and and we are all. You know, God is in us. God is everywhere. So, um, and I'm very. I mean, it sounds difficult to get the head around it and I think um, so many religions came up with images of gods because people find it easier to to uh, pray to uh, Shiva or I don't know you know um, because then they have an image and okay we can bring offerings and it's a bit more tangible um, I think God is love um, you know and 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 light and it also sounds a bit like yeah right you know that's so what, <laughs> what the hippies say but I recently actually experienced it and that's I'm completely sold <laughs> on that yeah but it's um, you know the connection everything that opens your heart and and the connection with others or when this little um, joy you have when you see the Sun or a little flower this is all God you know and mm -hmm. it's all really brings you back to uh, the source. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have any problems with God. God. So I know some people because they associate it with with organized religion and in the name of those religion, lots of horrible things have been done. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the association with it is a little bit can be a little bit negative. But I think that um, we only have words, and words can't describe what God is really. Mm -hmm. So it's it's. I'm very happy to it. I mean, to use it to, it can't describe it, but we, we need to name it, and it could be also love or mm -hmm. universal energy. Yeah. yeah, so I, and I try to remind myself all the time of God and through gratitude, and sometimes I forget, but you know, really, um, every time I pass a beautiful tree or, or I see a person and judgments come in, I, I just say, there are God, if you can't see God in all, you mm -hmm. can't see God at all, yeah. you know, so I mean, it's practice, uh, and it's, I'm, I'm continuing to, to practice that because sometimes, obviously, I'm still 
oh no, I hope they're not sitting next down to me and the tube <laughs> and stuff. And then I think, why, you know? Yeah. And that I attracted them there, so so I could learn something, you know. Mm -hmm. So really, see every person, every encounter as a learning opportunity, some universal, um, yeah, like a lesson. Really. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So so, in in regards to religion, you. Do you are you religious at all, or do you consider yourself a spiritual person yeah. or a religious person? Yeah, I mean, um, I think religion just means back to the origin, you know, so to the to the source, to the root. So in that respect, I, I would call myself religious. I, I think it's just um, I'm not part of any organized religion. Um, okay. I mean, Kundalini Yoga is influenced by Sikhism because okay. Yogi Bhajan was a Sikh. So we use the mantras, and that's pencil wear the turban, and um, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't feel the need to become a Sikh. Or I mean, my upbringing was Christian, and I, I have a connection to Jesus and Mother Mary. I really, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it resonates with me. Uh, but also, I mean, all all kinds of religions at the core they are the same, mm -hmm. and it's just as humans like oh no we are right you are wrong we have this book and our interpretation is like that and you you yeah. know and I think it's just it's, it's a bit of shame uh, but I think at the moment maybe people kind of they needed it and at some point hopefully they will think for themselves and come to that that uh, wisdom within uh, without following blindly those dogmas mm. um, so I think I'm religious and spiritual yeah. okay <laughs> all right and uh, do you see a difference between religions and spirituality then also? What does spirituality mean to you? Um, I think really for me, when, it, when you strip it all down, to, it's, it's the same thing really. Okay. Uh, it's about union with God, uh, union with, with everything, the whole of creation. Uh, and and, and internalising, rather than Oh, it's good to study and to discuss and you know, but it's about experiencing and it internalizing that um, truth. So um, yeah, I think that's really. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to make the differentiation. I think it's just okay. it's it's not necessary. Sure. It's just about my truth and um, and being at one with the, with the creation, trying to internalize it. You know. Okay. And, yeah. Great. Um, people are talking a lot about this um, ascension movement. Uh, it's some, one of the topics that we, we, we talk about in our website as well, quite a lot. So, do you believe in that and what does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. um, so, I definitely think there is, will be a whole shift, or there is already a shift in consciousness. So, more and more people are seeking um, like things like yoga very mainstream and sometimes we might think oh this yoga is in gym it's not really but if it might be a stepping stone for many people so people kind of uh, I read today what what differentiates us from from animals is that we we have this yearning we want to know why mm -hmm. <laughs> who are we why are we here uh, and I think more and more people wake up to that it's like okay I want to connect to this uh, strengths within, uh, to my higher self. Uh, they ha they might not even know it, but they are drawn drawn to certain practices. Mm. Um, and I think um, as much as there's lots of horrible things still happening, but it's the dark and the light, you know, will always be the case. Yeah. I think uh, there's more and more people waking up to a higher consciousness. The energies are speeding up, um, and I think there will be kind of we will vibrate out so as, as light workers so that more people will be attracted to also mm. choose that path. So yeah, in that respect, I'm, I'm very optimistic. Okay, well that, that sounds great. Um, in, what about soul mission and uh, you know having a connection to your soul and to your purpose? Do, do you believe in that? Have you found it and you know, how mm -hmm. did it happen? Yeah, um, I, yes, I believe in it. Uh, I think we still have a choice how we um, how we realize it. Uh, but for me, I had two um, events or situations where it was more or less confirmed. So what I'm doing. So one was uh, I went to it's a guru called Pramahanda Nityananda, and he uh, can access the Akashic records. Oh wow! Um, and he um, so you could ask questions. And I was kind of, yeah, what is my life purpose, <laughs> you know? And he said, he didn't know anything about me. Uh, he said, 
uh, you are a teacher, teach Korea to the world and you will be fulfilled. Mm. So, and I mean, in Kundalini we teach Korea. And uh, at that point, did I even start Kundalini? Maybe just about. So I wasn't, you know. Oh, wow. So yeah, it was quite, and I was very happy with it. You know? <laughs> and then uh, my other experience with Ayahuasca, just mm -hmm. at Christmas time this year, uh, she more or less said to me, okay, you have, I've given you everything I could, you have all the tools you need to so go and do it. Oh, so, wow. and, and I kind of understood that as what you're doing is the right thing, so continue mm. to do so. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, I feel like I have found it, but maybe it won't always be Kundalini Yoga, mm -hmm. but it will definitely teaching people, uh, helping them mm -hmm. to connect with okay. their higher self. Great. So yes, it's been really great so far, Marin. Um, I just wanted to ask you one last question that we intend to ask to our everyone that we're going to be interviewing. And um, what was the most amazing experience or the darkest experience you have, have had? Um, you know, tell us if, um, if it really touched your heart or, you know, it was something that you wanted to share with the world. Okay, so the first one that springs to mind was also the ayahuasca experience, but I think it was uh, it really took what what was there in me to work with. So I've done the work with Kundalini now for a few years. I've also done a lot of work with my mum, uh, healing work, and um, you know we work we really want to the Kundalini to rise. Mm -hmm. And in Kundalini yoga, it's 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 very gradually and uh, safe. So we use mantras. Uh, to protect the practice and it said you never get more energy than you can deal with so and mm -hmm. you know I definitely felt felt that and but it was I mean the most intense was on the ayahuasca because um, it was really a complete Kundalini awakening which maybe I would have never had in that way uh, through Kundalini yoga mm -hmm. maybe I, I might have but um, I mean that was really when I said so I could ex feel that I'm this love and I'm there's nothing else it's just love and light you know mm. and the energy was just rising up like unstoppable and it was was wonderful oh, wow. and I think we get these experiences as a reminder uh, so when when maybe things are not going so well or we have a little bit of a oh no, I'm not do no I don't know why I'm doing this it's kind of a reminder of you have it it's there you have experienced it and there's no denying it and it's always there you just need to access it you know um, so it was wonderful. Um, I had a few Kundalini experiences that were a little bit difficult because they were quite tough on the body. Mm. Because if there are blockages in the body and the Kundalini tries to, to rise, then it can be quite... Uh, so I felt like I had heavy weights rolling up my arms and all kinds of stuff, oh, you wow. know. Or I was completely, somebody was lying on top of me or I couldn't move or... Um, when I did my own energy work. Um, but because I was prepared quite well by my mom and she gave me oh, literature, yeah. so I knew that, that it was was fine, it was part of the cleansing process because uh, ev the energy channels have to be cleansed before the Kundalini can rise the right way, so Shumna, so uh, the central channel. Um, so yeah, that I mean, there, there were many things that were remarkable on that journey and that kind of, um, all the efforts kind of came together in the Ayahuasca ceremony. Ayahuasca just picks you up where you are at and shows you and so that was the most beautiful but what I always wanted to say for me it's always when I see students grow that is the most wonderful thing and uh, they just come maybe by chance even never heard of Kundalini Yoga and then you just see them change under your eyes in, in like a very short period of time and that's oh. I'm very grateful and it's the most wonderful thing really um, yeah <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. It's oh nice, God. really lovely having you here. And uh, yes, it would be lovely to see you on your workshop as well on Sunday. And yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much for inviting me.